All right, now I know that a lot of you are not necessarily the biggest fans of the mirror matchups in StarCraft 2. Personally, I think Terran versus Terran, Protoss versus Protoss, and Zerk versus Zerk are awesome, but there's no denying that they are a bit of an acquired taste. In a way, it's kind of like it's kind of like your very first cup of coffee or maybe like your very first whiskey or whatever. Initially, you're like, okay, why do people even like this? But then over time, right, as you, you know, give it another chance, you start realizing some of the nuances to it, and it's actually quite enjoyable. Anyways. Um, when it comes to Protoss versus Protoss, I think that these two players are gonna make it very spicy and not boring whatsoever. I mean, especially our blue Protoss player here. He oftentimes tries to play or he tries to play like the opponent in this actual matchup. So he's not afraid to play very aggressively. And then we have probably the most aggressive Protoss player in the world, at the very least at the professional level, right here in the bottom left. Playing with the red Protoss pieces, we have Haas. And the man who faced off against him many times before, he goes by the name of Cyan. All right, so Haas planting his very first pylon on the other side of the map, following it up with just a single gateway right now. All right, fair enough. Probe going across here. Cyan has not picked up on this just yet. And actually, Haas right now going for double pylon in the main base of the opponent. So I guess this is him faking a cannon rush? So already, this makes very little sense in my head. Maybe someone can make... Hmm. So the problem is, right, when you go for a fake cannon rush like this, Cyan is definitely going to make a Zealot, which is going to be great against the Zealot that you're going to be producing out of the single gateway proxy. Like, where's the logic, right? So sometimes Haas plays strategies that are so smart that it's almost stupid, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So he goes for a very low commitment single gateway over here into a fake cannon rush, it seems. One pylon is still up on the high ground. Um, Cyan now is going to make a defensive Zealot, which is going to be amazing against the Zealot right here that Haas has. Haas not following it up with a second Zealot. Instead, he's now going to go for a delayed Cybernetics Core, whereas the Cyber Core here for Cyan is at the appropriate time. Obviously, he's also been forced to cancel a couple things here and there. Okay, Cyan thinking about going for a Stargate as a follow-up. Haas, okay, blocking this so the Zealot can still walk in. The problem is, there's obviously a Zealot right here for Cyan right now. There's going to be an Adept very soon as well, plus he's got probes. So this shouldn't deal any damage whatsoever. Stargate comes up right now at a very appropriate time and... Well, Haas doing the same thing right now on the other side of the map as well. Uh, he shouldn't really lose anything. Where's the... Why did the Zealot go back to working on that pylon? Do you still believe that this is a fake cannon rush? Or a real cannon rush? Uh, Alright, I think that was one probe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes the problem with Haas, right? I think playing against Haas, I mean, I've never played against him, but sometimes he goes for a proxy, but it's actually fake. Like this one, I guess. Sometimes it looks real, but it's actually fake, right? Sometimes it's fake, but it actually looks real. Sometimes it's real, and I guess it's real. And sometimes it's fake, and it's actually fake. <laughs> what I'm getting at is that you're constantly second-guessing yourself. Um... Oh, good scout right there, actually, for Cyan. He did see the Stargate from the opponent. Has also seen his opponent's Stargate. So now they're both going to start chrono-boosting out a couple of those Phoenixes. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying is that the games get very confusing. And it can be hard to know what the opponent is going for. Cyan right here hitting a supply block, which is very rough. Where you're both producing Phoenixes. The guy with more Phoenixes will pretty much always win. Okay. Yeah, I think the second Phoenix, well, maybe it shouldn't have been out already. Hmm, these two adepts. I feel like they should have also not been in here, man. All right. Yeah, at some point that uh, Graviton, like, lift, whatever it's called, that lift ability right there for the Phoenix, it does wear off. And now, how many workers? Six workers. One adept goes down. Second adept did get out. Not bad whatsoever right here for Haas. All right. All right. All right. All right. So the question is, can Cyan out Haas Haas? Can he, like outsmart Haas in the way that Haas approaches the game. So, now both players are playing Phoenixes. Haas has got a significant advantage in the economics. However, obviously, that gateway on the other side of the map, yeah, it's now been found. That one's gonna be shut down. Um, There's a pylon over here as well for Cyan, so he's blocking his opponent's natural. Haas following this up right now with a second gateway at home. I think the third one in total. But uh, I guess there is a small advantage right here for Cyan as far as the, uh, yeah, the amount of Phoenixes go, right? So in these Phoenix battles, I mean, I guess he should have been a full Phoenix ahead just because of the timing right there of the Stargate. So like his Cybercore was faster. His Stargate was still delayed, but still faster than Haas's Stargate because Haas's Cybercore was even later because of the proxy gateway, right? Anyways, um... The person with more Phoenixes should be in a much better position. 
Scion right now decides to engage. There's a couple of Stalkers are underneath. Why are we fighting here? Why are we fighting underneath the Stalkers? Or above the Stalkers, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Look, I don't claim to be a Protoss versus Protoss expert. I'm definitely not the best Protoss player in the world, but... <laughs> As a matter of fact, I haven't played any Protoss on the ladder in months. But that made no sense, right? Well, you think you've got the superior Phoenix count? Why, why fight under... Nah. Anyways, a probe has been brought across the map as well. Haas apparently, yeah, just repowering that gateway that lost power a little while ago. Now using that as a recharge point and a re warp in point. So he's going to be able to get three of those units inside of his opponent's natural very soon. Cyan is going for a shield battery at home. Obviously, the battery can't overcharge until this Nexus is done. At this point, Haas has been producing out of more gateways for a little while longer. And obviously, he's got better eco as well. At this point, he can just, yeah, Haas that is just pick off whatever he likes. Nexus goes down. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Haas has now got his own Nexus halfway done. Going for a Robo Facility. Fair enough. Twilight Council here as a follow-up for Cyan. Um, really feel like this should have been a lead for Cyan, but it's <laughs> it seems that those two Adepts did a little bit too much damage, and the early game shenanigans there for Haas may have very well confused Cyan enough to actually... Oh, this is nice, though, for Cyan. What? Uh, uh, what was that? Why did we... Uh, he didn't finish off the, the sentry and instead he started lifting the probe. A little bit too greedy right there. Anyways, um, what I'm trying to say is I think this should have been a lead for Cyan, but Haas doing Haas things, right? So when you know... So this was played I am Katowice, right? When you know you're going to be facing off against Haas, you're probably going to be second guessing your every move. Because like this made very little sense. A fake cannon rush after going for a low commitment single gateway proxy with a delayed cybercore. Like, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So maybe Sion was like, okay, if he's, you know, doing this, there there has to be some sort of aggressive follow-up, right? Or maybe he's going like a, a really greedy follow-up. There, there has to be something there. But no, Haas just kind of followed it up as you would a normal game. Except that he didn't really deal any damage with his first couple of structures. He was forced to cancel and lose a couple of pylons there, and then the, the proxy really didn't do a whole lot. Anyways, it still worked out. Those two adepts snuck into the main base, and then that very strange Phoenix battle still gives Haas the lead. He's brought a, uh, a prism to this party right now. Blink is about halfway done at this point for Cyan, which is nice and all, but I think uh, an immortal or something along those lines would be much better. All right, good set of force fields right there. Third force field also in the perfect position. The problem is, yeah, maybe Haas doesn't have Blink, but he's just got a whole lot of stuff, and he's got a prism that he can put units in and reinforce his army with. Okay, battery overcharge is going to be absolutely critical. Is there enough right now, though? I think, yeah, he can just point and shoot at whatever he wants to kill. At this point, Haas doesn't even really care too much about that battery overcharge. He's got so many stalkers that, sure, Blink is going to be nice and all, but at that point, I think Haas... He's gonna go up against Cyan, who's got like three Stalkers. There's two Phoenixes. It's like, hey guys, can you please overextend with the Prism? Not happening so far. I mean, this is an old army hotkey I've ever seen one, though. That really isn't what you should be doing with the Prism there, but I guess Haas, he's gonna find a pretty significant lead right here in game number one of this best of three. Already very aggressive. GG. Game number two is on Berlin Grad. I guess the question we need to be asking ourselves, is Haas actually 200 IQ, or does he just get into the opponent's head and therefore, you know, the opponents just start playing like absolute derps? Is that what Haas actually... I, I guess Haas over like the last five years of competing at the professional level, he's been carefully crafting this image of being an absolute madman who can do anything at any time in any game against anyone. I mean, he literally made it to the grand finals of a premier tournament a couple of years ago where he got absolutely destroyed by Serral for what it's worth. Because Serral's like, yeah, no, it's not going to work against me. But it works against most people and therefore... <sighs> I mean, look, okay, now we have an actual cannon rush here, but Cyan thought he was playing against a cannon rush in the previous game when he was still working with that one zealot on the pylon. Like, that build that Haas went for in the previous game made very little sense to the point where, like, Cyan's like, okay, it makes so little sense that I actually think you've got something else on the back of this and I need to be very scared about you. Anyways, what do we have? Pylon's going up right here inside of the main base of Cyan. Cyan did send out a scouting worker, so he'll figure out soon enough that this is not a fake cannon rush this time around. Mmm, this pylon? So Haas cannot put down a photon cannon over here. 
Uh, mm -hmm. That's not in range. No, he needs to cancel this pylon. Oh my god. Really? So this is another one of those moves. If he didn't make this pylon over here, I think he probably could have fit a photon cannon there. But now since he's... Mm -hmm. This is the latest cannon to a cannon rush ever. Zealot is going to be out. Probes have now killed that pylon as well. Cyan has pulled workers away from minerals here for a long time, so... Okay, he starts up another pylon over there too. Anyways, what I'm trying to get at is he doesn't start up a Cybercore. Like, having like a Stalker out against this would be amazing, right? Then you can just kill the probe. Uh, he's trying to buy as much time right here for the Zealot, so the Zealot is eventually going to make their way over there, okay? We also now see the probe going down regardless, so this is not working out. How many workers can this one Photon Cannon here kill before it inevitably gets destroyed? Uh, a couple. Yeah, a couple. Alright. That that was not good. That was re <laughs> that was really quite bad right here for Mr. Haas. Still not a cyber core though. Uh, without a cyber core, this can actually go on. No, really? He doesn't cancel and he actually starts up a freaking zealot? I thought that this gateway was mostly just there to block and reduce service error. Oh my god. Reduce service error. <laughs> So this is played at the World Championships! There's so much sloppiness that there's another probe going down and we have another probe, like a, a, a... What is this? The third or the fourth probe from Haas? Anyways, he really wants to make the Zealot over there. Eventually, a Cybernetics Core has been built. Haas obviously has been happily producing some workers at home as well, so it's not like his eco is terrible. Doesn't have a Cyber Core of his own yet, though. Alright. No, this is never... Hmm. So, the amount of resources that Haas has lost at this point is pretty bad. Now, obviously, that doesn't take into account the amount of lost mining time here. So, Cyan didn't have, like, 10 of his workers mining there for the majority of the game so far. So, I guess it's sort of even. But the real advantage right here that Cyan has is this Cybernetics Core. Cybernetics Core does start up here on the other side of the map. But Haas is solidly stuck on one base here for the time being, right? He's not going to be able to get out of here anytime soon. Hmm. I still can't believe he put a pylon over there, and then he's like, yeah, I'm gonna put a pylon over there, too. What was that? I think if he just put the pylon over there, he could have fit a photon cannon over there, like, literally 10 seconds sooner. It would have been an entirely different game, right? Am I crazy? Am I loco? Haha. <laughs> Anyways, Haas is like, you know what? My first cheese didn't work. We've had one cheese, yes. What about second cheese? <laughs> Proxy Stargate. He's going Stargate into someone who's already started up their own Stargate, though. Okay. Ooh, this is actually really good right here for Cyan. For some reason, the wall-off was not started off. Or, or not completed. So this is... Okay. This is a real disaster. Since Haas obviously has his production structure on the other side of the map, um, he's not going to be able to defend with, like, I don't know, anything at home against this stuff. Haas already, though, preparing an additional pylon. So he's not actually going to be hitting a supply block here, which is kind of funny. How many workers will go down here? So far, not that many. Alright. He should really kill some more probes. Anyways, what do we have? A Void Ray follow-up right here for Cyan, which is really good, actually. I like the Void Ray follow-up here a lot. Alright. Nine probes. So Cyan now with an extremely significant lead. I like the Void Ray because of it. The Void Ray is like the, I'm not gonna die to anything stupid sort of thing, right? I mean, you could still get hit, I guess, by like, I don't know, cloak units. But obviously, you can still go for an Oracle as well if you really want to. Um, Cyan scattering around the map. Oracle is coming up right here for Haas. This Oracle will need to kill about 12 workers in order to justify, you know, existing. Don't know if it's gonna work out, okay? Nice move right there by Cyan actually completing the wall. That's what Haas should have done on the other side of the map, but I guess he didn't. And at this point, Cyan actually finds... Okay. Chrono? Or, or battery? Well, whatever it's called. Cool. Prismatic alignment? There you go. He actually finds the, the Stargate over here, so this should be okay. Second Void Ray is out. Stalker in the main base. Shield battery in the main base. Cyan doing all the right things. So there it is. GG. Alright. So. Game 3. Our final game for today. It's on 2,000 atmospheres. <laughs> and once again... Haas is such a madman. I love casting Haas games, but oftentimes they are very confusing. Okay. I saw something uh, I saw something glowing right there from the corner of my eye. 
<laughs> Goes for the pylon over here. So look at this. That difference is huge. Like, already, Haas is 10 seconds behind. He needs to make up for that somehow, some way. Now, in game number one, he went for a single gateway, which is why that made so little sense to me. Are we... Ag yeah, again, it's just a single gateway for... Mm -hmm. Cyan might accidentally see this. Ooh, okay, barely not. Haas knows the positioning where he should be proxying this. Uh, there's a gas as a follow-up as well, so he's not going to go completely all-in with this, but... What's, like, what's the advantage we're creating right now? Cyan's second gateway is going to be at a very normal, very, yeah, standard time. Second assimilator in the main base. Sometimes I think that Haas is, like, out hassing himself. Right? Where he's, like, going so hard into being Haas that he's like, I am this crazy guy, I can do anything! And then, like, you know... He kind of plays himself? Like... Where? Where's the advantage? So, look at the Cybernetics Core timings. Nothing's really happened yet at this point in the game. But the Cybernetics Core here for Haas is significantly later. Plus, I mean, he doesn't have a second gateway. So, like... Cyan at this point, his worst... Pro like, I guess Cyan at this point is concerned that there's like three proxies. Or like, but he's, he's got a double gas in the main base. Alright, well, anyways, I think he's gonna find his shenanigans here eventually. And he will... Mm, no, never mind. <laughs> Still not found. I think this is a very likely location, but... Look at that beautiful little triangle over here. Illuminati confirmed? Anyways, uh, there's, <laughs> there's a pyramid right over here. Uh, of a little bit of vision that he missed. A safety zealot here as well, just to make sure you don't run into anything dumb. And I guess uh, Haas does have the advantage right now of the faster Stargate. Twilight Council goes down here for Cyan, though, which is really good. Obviously, uh, Protoss versus Protoss can be a little bit like rock, paper, scissors, where Twilight Councils tend to counter Stargates, and Stargates tend to counter Robo Facilities, and Robo Facilities tend to counter Twilight based openers. Anyways, um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally he sees it. Cyan's still not scouting that location. I guess the advantage Haas is trying to create for himself by going for this is like... That the opponent thinks there's no way that this is all it is, right? Like, there's no way this is all my, you know, build is gonna be or his build is gonna be and therefore... They can kind of play themselves. But I feel like Haas is out Hassing himself so far in this series. Oh. That's what's going on, I was gonna say. One Adept apparently went across. Void right now has been scouted. We go for a Dark Shrine? No, bro, we go Blink! Okay, anyways. <laughs> why a Dark... Why? Uh, what's the point of the Dark Shrine here? It's like, okay, I know my opponent is going flying units. So I guess what I need is, you know... Dark Templar. I mean, Dark Templar can work out, obviously, if Haas doesn't have any... Info, right? And he doesn't know that there's a Dark Shrine. But Void Rays are pretty quick. They can go across the map. Oracles can obviously be made pretty quick as well. Alright, there's still Blink as a follow-up. So it's one base, double a gateway, Dark Templar with Blink. Alright, I like the I like the Blink here a lot. Anyways, Gateway has been unpowered. Two adepts over here. No wall off, obviously, for Haas either, right? So, eh, I don't think you commit. Nope. Nicely done right there with Cyan, cancelling that at the appropriate time. So, Cyan right here, scouting out what's happening. I think he needs some sort of proxy pylon, doesn't he? He doesn't have any pylons out on the map, so, like, where are you gonna... How are you gonna send the DTs? So, Dark Shrine is done. What are we... Okay, there's a Dark Templar being warped in somewhere. Where is it? The clicking doesn't work. Is the Dark Templar invisible? Oh, it's right... Okay, there, sorry. That's pretty much invisible on the minimap, okay? In my defense. I did not see that on the minimap. Anyways. Blue versus red on this map can be a little bit tricky. I was gonna say, where is he gonna warp this in from? Anyway, Cyan at this point is uh, showing a little shimmer right there. A nice scout by Haas. Sees what's going on. Dark Templar here has been revealed. Bunch of workers will still end up finding their graves over here, though. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. I mean, I feel like two Adepts probably could have done the same thing, but let's not talk about that too much. 
Second DT over here, going to town, dealing as much damage as possible. 13, 14, 15. Blink at this point is of course done as well, and there it is. Okay, Cyan. Cyan successfully obtains the victory after a very chaotic series. In case you're unfamiliar, I upload a new StarCraft videos pretty much every single day. And make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you get notified as soon as those videos go live. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you once again in the next one.